So in May of 2024, about eight months ago, I was at a conference in Bucharest at UiPath, and I was getting kind of tired. It was late in the day, and then someone up front said, self-healing robots, and that woke me up. And now they're here in the public preview, so let's have a look. So the idea behind a self-healing robot or the self-healing agent, as it's called, is that some of the most common problems with our automations should be easier to fix. So the self-healing agent can do two things generally. It can suggest fixes for our robots or it can try to fix them on the fly. So um, it can fix a number of different problems. It can fix stuff like selectors that have gone bad because the target application has been altered. It can fix timing issues. It can fix uh, like if a pop-up comes up and grabs focus from your automation or blocks uh, the view of an element that is to be clicked or text uh, box that's to be filled out or something like that. A number of problems can be fixed using uh, this new technology. In this video, we're going to look at um, a very common problem the most common problem for me at least, and that is selectors that go bad for some reason. So I've built this very simple form that we're going to automate and then try to alter the form and then see if the automation can fix itself. The form is very, very simple. It has a first name field, a last name field, and a submit button. Uh, and if we fill out the first name field and the last name field, and just before we hit the submit, notice the URL up here. It just says heal one. And once I submit, we get these two uh, query string parameters, first name equals Jeppe and last name equals Jesperson. That's because this form submits back to itself. That's all it does. And the names of these uh, parameters are defined by the name property inside of the source code. Let's have a quick look at the source code. The most interesting stuff here is basically this uh, element right here. It's an input element of type text. It has the ID first name, and the ID is a unique identifier. And then the name, first name, and that's just the name of the value that you saw up there in the uh, URL. Other than that, what I have here in the background in this uh, big orange thing is my virtual machine. That's the machine that's actually going to uh, run this automation. A couple of things to take note of. You need to have a robot version 24.10.8 as of right now, January 5th, 2025. So a robot version 24.10.8, it has to be a community edition. It is not out yet uh, in GA for enterprise. And then also the UI automation activities need to be 24.12.3 inside of Studio. But let's jump into Studio and start building the automation. So here we are in Studio and we can see here in the dependencies list that we are using the UI automation activities package 24.10.8. That is too old, so we're going to have to upgrade uh, that. So we'll click uh, Manage, select the package, and then just, well, it already selects the 24.12.3 preview package. I'll click Update and Save. And now we're ready to go into the Activities pane, and I have added uh, a few activities to my favorites here. The uh, Use Application or Browser activity, the Type Into activity, and the Click activity. That's because those are the three activities that we're using in this demo. So I'll drag in the user application or browser activity, and then I'll indicate the browser that we want to automate. That's this one. Then I'll drag in a type into activity, and then I'm going to indicate inside the browser window what is the uh, field that I want to type something into. That'll be the first name field, and it's going to suggest uh, an anchor also. And I'm going to delete that because we're going to try to make it as easy as possible for this to fail and to give it as few ways as possible to fix itself and see if it's still able to do it. So um, so very simple target. We're also going to say that we want a strict selector, no fuzzy stuff here, no computer vision, and we're also going to remove this table row just to make it just a little bit harder for the, um, the healing agent to, to work. And then I'll click Confirm. Then I'm going to add another type into activity. I'll indicate the last name field and we'll just leave the anchors for that because, and everything else, we'll just leave that because we're not going to touch that field. Um, of course, we need to type something into those fields and into the first field, we'll type Bob and uh, into the next field, we'll type Smith, like that. Then we're going to take a click activity, drag that in, indicate that in the browser, indicate the submit button and confirm. 
So now we have an automation that should work with this uh, form. So let's try and publish this to the machine and see if it actually does work. So I'll publish it. We'll call it, uh, well, the package is called Selector Healing. I'll publish it. There we go. We'll go into our browser, go into Orchestrator, and we can see here inside of my uh, platform, I don't have anything. I have no uh, packages, no anything, basically. The only thing we have is the um, Selector Healing package that was published 13 seconds ago. So I'll go to the shared folder. I'll go to processes and we can see we don't have any processes. We'll add the process. We'll select the selector healing package. We'll go next, next. And then we have these new options here. Enable agent healing. That will generate a suggestion if the uh, automation fails. It's not going to try to heal it on the fly. Only if you enable uh, healing agent self-healing will it try to do it on the fly. But we are okay with that. We'll click Create, Close, and now we have this one new process. So let's try and run this and then jump over to the uh, virtual machine to see if it actually does run. And I'll click Start, go to the other window. And we saw that it did enter Bob Smith and clicked the Submit button. And then it did close the form, so we didn't but, but it happened, right? So um, everything is, is good so far. Now, what we could do inside of this editor we have here is actually edit the website. So let's open it again here inside of the virtual machine, just to make sure that the, the source code actually does change. So if we look at the source code for this now, we can see that the uh, input field for the first name is actually has an ID of first name, and also the name is first name. We'll, we'll change both just for the hell of it. So go into the editor here and we'll just change it to F name and F name. And then we'll save it. Go back here, do a quick refresh, view the page source. And now we can see that the uh, ID is actually F name instead of first name. So now the robot should break. So I'll close everything up here. Go back into my uh, orchestrator. Look at the jobs that have run. I'll just do a quick refresh. We can see that the selector uh, healing job did run with success about a minute ago. If I restart the job now, we'll see what happens. And we need to have a little bit of patience because it's going to try different things when it is unable to find the right uh, screen element. But let's just uh, restart it. And then I'll fast forward the video whenever things take a little bit too long and then you don't have to wait so long. So let's restart it click start and go to the virtual machine. And we can see that it actually finds the web page very quickly, but it doesn't type in Bob uh, Smith, was it? Yeah, it was. So let's see if that happens before too long. And now it found the field and typed in Bob Smith and hit the submit button. It took about a minute maybe, um, but if you're patient, Usually it will find it. So let's go into the job and we can see that it actually completed the job with success here. If we click the um, menu over here and select view logs of this job, what we'll see is that we have the job details as always. We have the logs, which basically tells us everything that happened. And it tells us here that it could not find a UI element corresponding to this selector, blah, blah, blah. And then it started the healing agent to try to recover and try to suggest a fix for this problem. And since we enabled that auto healing, auto fixing option inside of Orchestrator, it actually fixed it on the fly and completed the job successfully. So it didn't break our robot. But what it did is, if we go to this last tab over here, healing agent, what it did is it gave us a description of what it found and what could be changed. So down here at the bottom, if I zoom in a little bit, we can see here that the original tag that was expected was the one that had first name in it because that was what the uh, element was called or the ID of the element when we built the automation. But now it found that the ID probably should be F name. And then we could add also the table row equals one to further increase 
the chance of it finding the right screen element. So this is actually pretty cool. It also shows us some, some screenshots, what it wasn't able to find. And then the second screenshot over here, if we're lucky, it shows us what it thinks is the right element. So a bunch of information in here that's, that's quite useful. Now, what you can also do is go up here to the top and you can download this debug file. And this is a file if we download it. It just takes a, a couple of seconds. There we go. Ready for download. It placed it in my uh, downloads folder. So if I open my downloads folder, we can see that there's this zip file here. Now, if I open Studio, which is already open, I can go to Autopilot in here and I can import this debug file. And it will then show me some of the information that we saw inside of Orchestrator. What I can also do, I'll just close Studio real quick, is I can simply click here, open in Studio. Now I can only do that because this uh, Studio is directly connected to the tenant in which the automation ran. Uh, so if you have like a test tenant or development tenant and it happened in production, then you'd have to connect Studio to the production tenant. I don't know that you want to do that. So in that case, you would download the file, import it in Studio as I just showed you. But if you are connected to the same tenant as the automation ran on, what you can do is just click open in Studio. That will then open Studio with that file that I just downloaded. And in the uh, autopilot tab, I'll just maximize my studio here so we can see stuff better. There we go. And then in the autopilot tab over here, we can see some of that same information that we just saw inside of the, um, the orchestrator. Now, what I can do inside of studio now is I can simply take these suggestions that it made and say, apply. So I just say, apply and confirm. I publish a new version. And I go to Orchestrator again. Go to Automations. We can now see that this selector healing has a new version. I select it, upgrade to latest version, confirm. And we can run the automation, click start, go to the virtual machine. And hopefully we'll see the automation run without any problems this time. He starts, types in Bob, Smith, hits the submit button, and there we go. So this is a very, very uh, simple example of how auto healing can really help you fix both on the fly, but also inside of studio to, to repair stuff that is more permanently broken. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does mean a lot. Subscribe to my channel. There's more stuff coming out soon. And if you have any questions, comments, ideas, anything you want to communicate about, put it in the comments below. I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching uh, this one. Oh, by the way, here's one video you can watch. There's another one here. And down here, I think it is, you can subscribe uh, to my channel also by hitting the big round thing. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.